It's been one of the most amazing years of my life. A global search for a complete sense of well-being. I'm Rachel Hunter. I've collected some of the most remarkable beauty and health secrets from my worldwide tour of beauty. I met some wonderful people. Love it and makes people become beautiful. Who taught me their unique beauty secrets. It feels like a baby bump. You are gold. How to achieve superior health and a long, happy life. <laughs> now that I'm home, I'm learning what works best for me and sharing even more discoveries from my global travels. This time, my favorite natural wonders, nuts, seeds, and oils. Oh, it looks like they've counted a big poo. <laughs> On my travels, I found these three ingredients, the source of so much that's good for us. <laughs> I pooed my nostrils. <laughs> and show me the honey. Its wealth of goodness took me from Mexico to Dubai and Greece. It's like liquid gold. Morocco in North Africa. I loved it there. When I wasn't filming, I was shopping. These buildings in this Medina are just incredible and they're just filled with all these colors and hand-woven shoes and rugs. It's just endless. Do you want to see my Berber rug? This is hand done. Absolutely stunning. This country's got beaches, mountains, deserts, and great markets. But beyond the trinkets and textiles, Morocco gave me argan oil one of my favorite beauty products, and what a special nut it comes from. For years, I've used argan oil to smooth my naturally frizzy and very unruly hair. It works a treat. We found it near goats and trees, and some of it even processed and sold in the Atlas Mountains. Its uses are as diverse as the Moroccan landscape. We use it for hair, yeah. but also for face, for problems of skin like eczema, psoriasis, yes. Right. So, I mean, the properties of it are just so rich for medicinal purposes as well as for co cosmetic. Yes, it's uh, rich in vitamin E, and we use it, for example, in creams. So this is a woman's cooperative Correct, up, yes. up here in the mountains? Yes, from this region, yes. Oops, they actually help women who need to find work or if someone's divorced in the region or is, is trying to support a family. It's like a work for ladies. It's amazing. I'm very excited. I'm excited to have found a argan woman's co-op in the middle of the mountains in Morocco. But the job of making argan oil is a hard nut to crack, and once the kernel is exposed, it takes a pounding to unleash the oil. And this is the residue, the rest. Oh, it looks like they've counted a big poo. <laughs> the whole process takes hours, so it's no wonder they've found so many uses for it. Not only for hair and skin, but you can eat it as well. It's good for cholesterol, it's great for cardiovascular, anti-inflammatory. The roasted argan oil is better for cooking, for your salads, to your roast potatoes in, or whatever you want to do. Whereas the unroasted is really good for your hair and your face. It's a kind of very subtle, kind of nutty taste to it. But it's good and so different. And some people actually say this is an aphrodisiac. Well, I can't say that's worked for me yet anyway. But Morocco wasn't the only place I found remarkable oil treatments. It was in India that I discovered amla oil, a health tonic for hair and scalp issues. Okay, so now these are gooseberries. Yeah. But they are the gooseberries that you get the oil from. Yeah. It's very sour. I like sour things, but that's just super sour. They're rich in vitamin C and, um, you know, it, it treats dry scalp very well. Dandruff and stuff like Prevents that. Prevents dandruff. Okay, so we're going to make an oil out of yeah. this. Yes. Fantastic. You just need two ingredients. First, you have to de seed uh, the amlas, then grind these finely in a mixer, okay. and then extract the juice. One part amla juice to two parts coconut oil. Okay, so we let that boil. Yeah. Women in India have the most beautiful hair. And is this something that they used to do daily yeah. with their hair? Yeah. Why is it so good for the hair? Uh, because the amlas itself, they nourish the hair. Whether it's used as a hair pack or whether it's used as a, uh, a hair rinse. And you know, you can't get, get fresh amlas all the time. So making a hair oil and storing it and using it daily for a long time is a very good idea. Now, if I have any issues with my scalp in the future, I'll be seeking out amla products. Apparently, they can even keep gray hairs at bay. 
And that's the oil on yeah. top. Yeah. Oh. Isn't Mother Nature door. just wonderful? She's so <laughs> clever. Well, you're clever. Amazing as Amla is, it was in Fiji that I found a natural oil I could have coated my whole body in, made from the dilo nut. Uh, what it is about it that makes it so special is that it goes into your skin and it signals to your body that it needs to uh, make new skin cells and repair where it's damaged. So it actually helps regenerate new skin cells and tissues. So that's what makes it so good for anti-aging properties. That is one mega nut if it helps new skin to grow and the remarkable story of its healing powers during a leprosy outbreak here over a hundred years ago convinced me there's a lot to this little nut. There was a group of Catholic uh, nuns who were commissioned uh, to care for the leprosy patients. And one in particular, Sister Suzanne Marie, noticed the Fijian patients were actually applying this dark green oil onto their lesions. So she developed a little injection and she injected those into the wounds and lesions of the leprosy patients and it started to actually relieve the sores and scars. Immediately as you put it on your skin, it really absorbs in quickly. And that's because the molecular makeup of the deal oil is so much similar to your own skin uh, that it absorbs right in. Also, it's very caramelly looking too, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's like honey consistency of it. Absolutely beautiful. The Dilo nut is now my go-to anti-aging oil. I use it every day. And it was in Fiji I got to try the hydrating power of coconut water right from the source. I, I drank all of it. It's amazing. <laughs> and La gave me a lesson in how to make coconut cream the authentic way. I've got to work hard for something I'd normally get from a can. Okay. That on here? Up and down. Okay. Slowly. And before you scrape coconut, you need to see that the meat is fresh and white. I'll be right with you. I won't be eating too much of this, though. It's wildly high in calories, but at least it's cholesterol-free. Keep on scraping until you get the brown part. I left school early because I was told what to do. Only you will be able to get away with this. What is the coconut to you? Coconut is a tree of life for us, especially Fijian people. We use it for cooking. We cook it for oil too. After a squeeze of the shavings, coconut cream, au naturel. Mine looks absolutely hideous compared to Lars. Look at yours. Yours looks all glamorous sitting over there, and I look like I don't know what this happened to mine. It looks all kind of. You need to fluff it or something. After you squeeze it. Yeah. And then you strain it. This is coconut cream. Oh. That's what we use for cooking. It's just an incredible consistency. Tastes incredible. Thank you. I'll admit I enjoyed a lot of spa treatments as I hotel hopped on my tour of beauty. And after everything I've done with a coconut, it was only appropriate that I got covered in one. I'm here at the Bembe Spa, where I'm gonna get a royal treatment with a coconut milk and honey ritual. Now, Bembe means butterfly, so hopefully I'm about to get transformed. I'm Elena, I'll be a therapist for this afternoon. Fantastic. In this uh, coconut milk and honey sugar rub, it helps to cleanse, nourishing, and moisturize your body. It leaves your skin feel softer and moist. It gets rid of your dead skin cells. Or I may say it feels like a baby bum. <laughs> oh my God, you are gold. I love that. Oh my God. The beauty of human touch and the smells and all the senses kind of really, I got wrapped up in this one. God, it smells good. The feeling as far as it feeling like a baby's bottom, absolutely. It was, it's, my skin is completely soft and I feel very transformed. Coming up, will a cure all seed I found in the Middle East work its magic on me? People eat this? People really eat this. Trying out new things was the name of the game on my tour of beauty, and I was up for it. But Mexico sure tested my tolerances. It's chilly. The chilies nearly blew my ears off. Oh my God. Are you right? Don't lick it like that. Oh my God. The mosquitoes made a feast of me. I've got a couple of uh, love bites from the locals. And some of the ancient cures and remedies got a little freaky. <laughs> 
But I'm not complaining because the superfoods I found in Mexico made it all worthwhile. Have you ever tasted amaranth, which is a grain that's kind of like quinoa and is high in calcium and protein? And what makes it special is it's gluten-free, which is great if you have a wheat allergy. This is a pretty special plant that they're planting right now. Yes. And Roque showed me how this amazing grain is growing near Oaxaca. Why are you so passionate about amaranth? There is a lot of properties like um, with zinc, with calcium, and also the protein that the amaranth have is like so strong. It's like meat or milk, wow. but it's better because, because it's no uh, like fat in the grain. It's just protein. Well, I know the problems that we have in Mexico with the malnutrition. I, I feel pro to have this uh, plant here. This is just gorgeous. Could I grow this in Los Angeles? Yes. Now here's the interesting thing. Amaranth was used by the ancient Mayans and Aztecs centuries ago. Now it's making a spectacular comeback, especially for the health conscious. This is the local store where they sell the amaranth products. There's loads and loads of different types of tostadas. So these are more of the savory style with the, the leaves of the amaranth in that. There's cookies. Who doesn't love a cookie? <laughs> Do they sell the seeds? You, you can buy the seeds here. OK, we'll get some seeds too. And Roque wasn't the only one passionate about amaranth. Amarantho? Top local chef Nora has a huge passion for Mexico's local grains. So would you consider the Mexican diet very good for your digestive system? Actually, you know, this is... Okay. This is, this is, this is... Nora is a huge advocate for amaranth and all indigenous Mexican ingredients. And her enthusiasm is infectious. You've just got so much information and so much passion and I love it. <laughs> This amaranto, it is one of the most wonderful food that you can bring to your body. So this is how we made amaranth pie with stewed apples. So now we're going to mix in here the amaranto and the avena. You don't waste anything. No. How are we going to waste that flavors? No, no, no. So now we're going to have in here on top of each container because these are going to the oven. That is perfect. While the pies were baking, Nora introduced me to an energy drink made from another Mexican superfood, the chia seed. And it was a pretty simple recipe too. Water. We're gonna mix in a little bit of honey. Look at this nice honey. And we're gonna use a little bit of sugar too. So now we're gonna dissolve this. We're gonna squeeze some of this lime juice. Do you see the color that we yeah. get now? Stunning. But the main ingredient was chia seeds, a fantastic source of omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants, eaten by ancient Mayan warriors to give them an energy kick. That is good for digestion. The chia, it's perfect to help your digestion. So how did it taste? Good. Mm. Yes, it gave me a lift pretty much straight away. And you can't go wrong with a drink using lemons and limes as well. As for the amaranth pies... Well, it's not heavy with pastry. And the amaranth and the oats are just lightly kind of put on top, toasted and then served cold, so everything's really light and really fresh and not too sweet. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. It's perfect and it's healthy. Mm. So I'm a convert to the natural wonders of the amaranth grain and the chia seed. But there's another seed grown on the other side of the world, which packs a mighty punch as well. I came across it in a market known as a souk in Dubai. This nigella seed. They say it's very high in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. okay. They also say that it helps in terms of respiratory disorder. It actually helps your immune system. The Prophet Muhammad recommended as the cure to everything except death. You can have it plain. You can sprinkle it on bread. But one of the most common ways is actually to mix it with honey and then have it. That's how my mom has it first thing in the morning. And a few weeks later in Morocco, when I could feel a cold coming on, guess what they recommended? It's called Nigella seeds. That's like aspirin first and Vicks. Really? Yeah, if one like headache, migraine, cold, or sinuses, or nose blocker, just we do it like this. And Assam told me nigella balls are also a great aid to combat snoring. Who knew? After, sniff it. No, close one nose and smell with the other one. <laughs> Sorry. Put a hole in my nose. I show you nose. how you do it. Oh, my God. 
Everything's becoming so clear. <laughs> I mean, it definitely makes you just, like, it opens your mind. If we have nose blocked or cold, just sniff it. Don't sniff it too hard, because it actually <laughs> burns a hole in your nose. It's strong. So when I got home to LA, I was into the supermarket to buy this multi-purpose wonder seed. They called it black cumin here. If you mix oil from the seed with honey, you can inhale it to help fight respiratory troubles and relieve stress and fatigue. <laughs> I burnt my nostrils. Okay, so, burns, burns. I'm kind of feeling the Dubai vibe going on in here now. You can actually hear the congestion's probably starting to come down now. It kind of brightens your eyes, wakes you up, and kind of you feel a lot more alert. You can see it's a very powerful seed. People eat this? People really eat this. Up next, there's all sorts of things going on on the inside. Raw, unpasteurized, house-giving honey from Mexico, Greece, and Yemen. It's amazing. Which one became my favorite? It's like liquid gold. I was living the dream when I got to travel the world collecting gems of information about health and well-being. What could be better than trying beauty treatments, experiencing different lifestyles, and discovering health benefits in some of my favorite food? I love raw, unpasteurized honey. It's great for the immune system. So of all the raw honeys that I got to taste from around the world, which one did I like best? People living on the Greek island of Ikorea are famous for enjoying a much longer life than almost anywhere else in the world. And they eat honey from bees, which feed on local heather and thyme. Ikorean honey is, is a, uh, a big product here that is part of their lifestyle and is also maybe a part of their longevity and wellness. So how does it taste? It's really good. And it's not sticky, it's super smooth in your mouth. This would be one of the best honeys I've ever tasted. It's like gold, like, it's like liquid gold. <laughs> I found a special honey in Mexico too. It was enjoyed by warrior Mayans and made by stingless bees. So no need for a hooded outfit here. They don't bite you. They're not aggressive at no. all, like they're all chilling out in their log. Yeah, in this place, pollen. The pollen, so I can eat that? Yes, you can eat it. It's like, um, Lemon. Yeah, very lemony. Yeah, but have a lot of vitamins. A wow. lot of vitamins. I am buzzing off that pollen. Mm. It makes you feel more like um, alert and energy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's kind of watery. It's very healthy for the body. So how does it compare to the Greek variety? It's not as sweet. Super gentle. A little bit more watered down, but. It, it doesn't leave that honey, honey sweet taste in your mouth. So a very different honey than the thyme-flavored Ikorean variety, but no less delicious. But it was only when I chanced upon Rayeth selling Yemeni honey in a Dubai suit that I understood the full benefits of raw honey. I'm being interviewed by a lovely blonde. All right, then. <laughs> Okay, bye. Let's just get behind the fact that okay. you have a very British accent. I know, I know, I know, I know, yeah. That's the issue, isn't it? Okay, so you're born in Sheffield. Do you want me Sheffield? to do with an Arabic accent? No, 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 no. I can speak like this if you want to. I know. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> I was born and raised in Sheffield. I'm a Yorkshire Arab. Um, I've been in Dubai for the last 10 years. So where did your passion for this honey come from? Just kind of like the first moment that I, I shoved it in my mouth, I felt like I was taken to a, a different world. 5,000 different types of natural enzymes in there to kind of like help digest. And also it's got hydrogen peroxide, which makes the honey antiviral, antibacterial. It has this ability to heal you. But honey's not only a delicious and medicinal food. It's amazing kind of like moisturizer. I would honestly recommend you. And it's really good that you can just kind of smear it on your face. So your lips are incredibly smooth. These hands are just beautiful and soft. I mean, super soft. Give a give over. You can make I know me those. Blush. I know those have been working in honey too. Well, I say we're going to try some honey. What we have here is raw honey. That's, okay, but that's, hang on a second. Yeah. There's all sorts of things going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's what we propolis. want. Propolis. That's like propolis. That's ginger. That's royal jelly. That's pollen grains in there. You know, you've got all these amazing kind of like herbs and spices that are inside this raw honey. Uh, unbelievable for the system. It's amazing. There's like this whole little 
universe going on in this bowl. There's like. And then it's all living as well. Pieces everywhere. Yeah, I've got you some just got me some... there. Just shove it in, no problem. Some of the flavours <laughs> in this honey were a bit too complicated for me, but there's so many more to try. It's quite it's... intense, isn't it? So we're gonna let you try now the wildflowers. There's about a thousand different varieties of, of flowers here. It's got this kind of lovely little coating that it has on your kind of like your tongue. Yeah, it's quite delicate. And this is amazing with cheeses as well. That's sweet. Very floral. Yeah, like a delicate perfume. It is, exactly. Yeah. That is an amazing way to describe it, because it's true. The honey mixed with wild flowers was my favorite of all. It's amazing. It is, I put it in a jar. <laughs> so yeah, it's amazing, it's delicious. Oh yeah, very glossy, wow. <laughs> I want lips like yours. Uh, you don't need, you've already got some juicy lips. Is that good or what? <laughs> and what a way to finish my selection of the best nuts, seeds, grains, and honey from my journey. They've all changed my life. Pure dealer oil. The dealer nut from Fiji. I love the feel of the oil on my skin, and its anti aging credentials make it a must have. I've always used argan oil for my hair, but now I use roasted argan oil to dress a salad. And it tastes really good. Amaranth, the best kind of gluten free grain. And now I've got the recipes, I'll be cooking up a storm making healthy tostadas and happiness baths. My favorite seed? Well, it has to be the chia because it really does pack an energy punch. And as for raw honey, I think the Yemeni variety gets my top vote. His honey is great to taste, and you only have to look at his lips to see how good it is for the skin. Honey lip balm. You can't beat it. Oh my god, the chilies. <laughs> Are you afraid of the chilies? Is it hot? It is hot, but you feel like a wow. <laughs> I guess I should lick that on the outside. Yeah, you have to. Is it chili? No, it's, uh, it's sugar with chili. <laughs> it's chili. <coughs> <coughs> Actually, I think we abuse of chili. Yeah, I think you do too. If I was with a guy, that wouldn't be very attractive. I mean, who wants to be seen blowing their nose and crying?